How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to City Skylines. Welcome back to Plazas and Promenades. And welcome back to the city of Nerdholm. In the last episode, we sat down and further expanded Nerdholm Institute, which is, of course, our first campus here in the city. We added a university, outdoor study, we added a gymnasium, we added a cafeteria, and we added a couple of plazas, a couple of fountains here and there as well, as well as, of course, a healthy dose of trees around the campus as well, which is something that's going to continue to expand as time goes by, but I really don't want to spend three episodes in a row working on this thing, so we're going to be moving away from Nerd Home Institute today, but not before we talk about a couple of other little things that we did, starting with Mulberry District and Highland Hills, which are two new districts to the southeast of Nerd Home Institute. They are following along the highway, they are following the coastline, and they are admittedly a little bit generic. Mulberry District, of course, has some of the self-sufficient housing in there. Highland Hills has a decent chunk of the modern city center stuff going on, and it also has a shopping center, it has a music club, it has a cinema, and it has a connection pretty much right to the highway as well. So, two new districts, a decent chunk of population added right there, and of course, just across the road, we also have a healthy expansion for Manor Trail. Now, I did say I wasn't going to do all of this in the last episode, and I didn't. I figured I would just do it between episodes because, for the most part, it was just a case of throwing in some bridges, throwing in some tents, throwing in some campfires, and the occasional little viewing platform. And with that, we now have an expanded Manor Trail that goes all the way from Theatre District the entire way around to the highway. And we do have people coming down here. We have people using this. We have people going out and camping. And I think it's a really nice, you know what I'm going to say, contrast between the modern city center buildings and the self-sufficient housing and these trees. So that's something I'm really happy about. But let's move away from here and let's talk about what we're doing today. Now, I've been spending a little bit of time looking at some of these roads because you might notice that there's a really good amount of traffic in here. And also, you might notice we're having another death wave. We're not going to worry too much about that. It is being made worse by this traffic problem, though. Now, something I did do was I came in here and I used Traffic Manager to introduce some timed traffic lights to this intersection, much in the way that we have timed traffic lights down here as well. I also used Lane Connector on a lot of these guys. Now, this is something that people routinely tell me not to do. I'm, I'm frequently told to not mess with Lane Connector because it's just unnecessary and I go a little bit too far with it. And I'm willing to bet that that's going to be the case here. But what I wanted to do here was set up a bunch of roads where you essentially have to stay in lane. And the reason I've done that is because this left lane can go to all of these lanes. This middle lane can go to all of these guys. This right lane can go to all of these. So really, what I wanted to do was essentially set up the most British of things that I possibly could, a queue. I wanted a queue of traffic waiting to move into whichever lane it wants to move into. And it has worked a little bit. This road here was originally super busy. It isn't anymore, so that's good. This road here was originally super busy to the point that we had buses backing up towards the stations, and it isn't anymore. The problem is that these roads are still super busy. Now, I did upgrade these guys. I did turn them into three-lane roads, and that has worked a little bit. We don't have traffic backing up towards this junction anymore from down here, but we do from over here. And this is where I want to start today. Not with traffic management, but with Primrose District, because I've been looking at Primrose District, and I don't remember if I said it in the last episode or not, but it is a little bit generic. It doesn't really have anything that makes it stand out. Sheffield Heights has this nice park. Florence Heights has a few little parks around here, but Primrose District is just defined by this little bit of weird road that's going on. And I guess it also has a small cargo service point in there. And I'm pretty sure somewhere 
there's also a metro station. I think it's right there, yeah. And it's a relatively busy metro station, but I think what I'd like to do is tear this district apart and turn it into something a bit more interesting. And I was sitting thinking about this and I realized, well, we could move the disaster response unit into this district and we could go to unique buildings and we could place things like the oppression office or like the grand library or we could go and get things like the courthouse and put that in here as well turning this into sort of a historical space nothing super historical it's not going to be covered in european buildings because like i've said i think we've used those a little bit too much but I think having things in there like the courthouse, having things in there like the disaster response unit, which to be fair, it is a modern looking building, but it takes cues, I think, from older looking buildings. If you compare the front of this to the front of this, I think you can maybe see what I'm talking about. It has the pillars. It has this sort of upper thing going on. It's, it's not obviously identical, but I think it's sort of a modern interpretation on... I want to say Greek slash Roman architecture. I don't know. It doesn't really matter. But that's what I want to do. I want to put those buildings in there. So that's where we're going to get started. Let's go ahead and dezone the entirety of Primrose District and give ourselves a beautiful canvas to work with. Now, I have to be completely honest. It's a little bit sad seeing this massive triangle of land just turned to nothing in the middle of the city, but it's also giving me ideas for what we can do. But of course, the first thing we need to do is move this metro station. This parallel underground metro station needs to go across the street, as far as I'm concerned, which is going to be interesting, to say the very least. It's definitely going to be an interesting little project to move this guy, because we do have a couple of lines that come through here. So what we'll do is go to Metro. We'll go and grab the parallel underground Metro station. And I've got to be honest, it's very tempting to use this one instead. But no, we'll stick with the same one. And I guess we'll just throw it, I want to say right about there. And I think next to it, just to fill up that space, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to, well, let's see if I can get things to snap. Interestingly, there we go. Uh, we'll do this. So we have a little path going next to it. We can take out this zoning back here since we don't need it. And then all I need to do is redo all of these metro lines, which I say that as though it's a small task, but it's it's kind of not because I realize this is going to be a little bit of a sharp turn right here. So, oh boy, let's uh, let's figure out how I'm going to do this one. Uh, I, I guess I guess what we can do is we'll go ahead and just take out this entire section of line for now. And if I grab this guy and we go for tunnels, we want to make sure we're doing that. I can sort of go for a sharp turn here, which is not going to be all that pleasant. It's not going to be a high speed turn, but at the very least, it would it would probably work. So now that that thing is across the road, that really does open up this entire space for us to have some fun with. And what I'm going to do essentially is I'm going to go in here with move it because I'm feeling a little bit lazy today. And I'm going to select all of these nodes is what I'm going to do so that I can just quickly delete every little bit of this without hearing the bulldozing noise that City Skylines usually has. So. We can just select all of these roads. You know, I say I'm feeling a little bit lazy today, but I think this might actually take a little bit more time than just going in with a bulldozer. But we'll select all of those and just delete. And that frees up that entire space. Now, I do want to keep some kind of perimeter road around this, but before I do that, I actually need to come in here and I need to adjust some of what's going on here. So these guys can go left right there this guy can go straight on i suppose and i guess you don't need to go to that lane anymore uh you can go straight on and you don't need to go to that lane anymore and i guess this guy as well is going to need adjusted a little bit so we'll just fix up some of these lanes i'm not too sure 
how well this is necessarily going to go, but we'll give it a shot. We'll see what it does for traffic, if anything at all. Uh, I'm also pretty sure, yeah, some of these guys are still very much set up for uh, for some left turns right there. So let's just make sure they are all absolutely situated. We're going to have some weird intersections around here as well. So on these ones, I'll just go ahead and control click with the lane arrows tool just to make things a little bit quicker. In fact, right here, it doesn't even need to be an intersection, really. Is that something I can get rid of? Can I delete a, a node if I select you and just do this? Yeah, I can totally do that. So now we don't even have a node there, although I should change this to have some trees along it. In fact, that's exactly what I'm going to do. So let's grab this guy. Let's go for a quick upgrade right there. And what I'm also going to do is go into my landscaping. I'm going to go into my content creator trees. I'm going to get the young Linden. And what I want to do is just change the trees on this road to uh, to the young Linden. Because I just think they look that little bit better. A little bit more of a, a pleasant shade of green, if I do say so myself. And I think we can do the same thing just over here to sort of tie these roads together a little bit. And I guess the same thing down here as well. And I think, honestly, I think these trees are going to look great. Oh, this one also needs upgraded. Let's just uh, let's get that sorted out nice and quickly as well. There we go. I think these trees are going to look great alongside all the buildings that I want to put in here. But uh, before we do that, like I said, I do want some kind of perimeter road in here. And I'm debating whether or not this should be a pedestrian zone. Because if we make it a pedestrian zone, I mean, it's going to cost us a bit of money, but I think it would make sense for a place that's going to have the courthouse and that could have other government-related buildings. I, I just, I get the idea that it might not be a bad idea. So let's go in and let's say that we are going to paint a pedestrian area. And also, I've just remembered that I did ask in the last episode, I have genuinely just remembered this, I did ask for a uh, suggestion for a name for that main road. I'm going to have to go and check the comments in a second and see what exactly we're going to go with. I did see some amazing suggestions in there. I saw quite a few suggestions talking about naming it after Queen Elizabeth II. I saw a few suggestions that you know mentioned maybe coming up with some kind of parody for the roads in London. So we'll take a little look shortly and just see what we can go for. Maybe towards the end of the episode, we'll go and name that road in Oak Garden. But for now, we have Spring Street. And I suppose now we go ahead and put our roads around this. Now, I don't necessarily know what to go for in terms of roads around this. I do feel like cobblestone would make sense, given that the idea is that this would be a bit of an older district in the Nerdholm lore. But maybe we go for bluestone? I'm not actually... Did I use bluestone over here? I did. It doesn't look bad, does it? I know I asked as well in the episode where we built this district. I asked what we should use, bluestone or cobblestone. The bluestone isn't bad. I think maybe we use bluestone. Since we've used cobblestone in here, we used sandstone up here. We might as well use bluestone in this space. So we'll go ahead and select it. We're going to disable zoning for the time being. And what I want to do, basically, is I want to go and put some kind of perimeter road in here. And the way that's going to look is very simple. It's going to be this. It's going to go up to here. It's going to go to about there for now. And we'll try and get these guys to sort of line up in a way that's all, all nice looking. So you are going to come all the way down here. And you are going to go and connect right there. And so that gives us a perimeter around this space. And what I can do is I can use things like this, the large bluestone pedestrian street with trees, to connect out to the main avenues. And that'll be a way for people to get in here. And I'm going to do a lot of these, I think, to be, to be completely honest. This might be a little bit of overkill, but I think having really good access and really regular access to this space is going to be good for us. So we'll do the same thing here. We'll do the same thing there. And down this way, we can do the same thing right about here. And we could probably look at getting a few more in here as well. I could do this, 
But I feel like that would be a nightmare for this junction. This junction's already a bit of a nightmare, though traffic's flowing better than it has been. But I'm very tempted. I'm very, very tempted to, uh, to put that connection through there and just let people walk, you know, straight through. Because we could do that, and we could then put something like the courthouse right on this corner. Although I just... <laughs> I don't... I don't know about this. This might be a terrible, terrible idea. Let's, uh, let's square this off a little bit. And, uh, I think we're gonna have to get rid of some buildings there as well, because they are not working anymore. There we go. We'll also bring you forward just a little bit if I grab the uh, the path just here there we go and uh, yeah that is going to give us a bit of a wide corner but I don't think it looks that bad except for what's going on here which I'm really hoping is a bit of terrain pain I don't think it is <laughs> really don't think it is but I can always uh, I can always be hopeful anything I can do to make this look a bit less terrible I can bring you out I can square this off a little bit maybe bring you back a little bit Let's actually do that. Let's let's set the offset on the the green right here to 20, on the blue to 20, and on the red to 1. And that helps us out ever so slightly. And then right here, if I bring you forward, that actually patches things up really well. So that's pretty good. That's actually a really That's a really good looking corner, you got to admit. It's it's <laughs> it's going to be a really cool place for something like a courthouse. And it is more access to a pedestrian zone, so I think... Oh, do we do it up here? Do we do... <laughs> do we do the same thing up here? Oh, I feel like we do. I feel like we have to. I feel like it just works, you know? It's It just, it just kind of works. I'm not going to do it down here because that's a roundabout. But I might... I could do it there as well. I think... I think this might be enough. Although this... Ah, down here does need a connection as well. What if we did... Uh, <laughs> I might really regret this, but what if we did this? That's completely messed with the zoning on this road, which is honestly okay. Let's grab the cobblestone and let's do... Oh, that doesn't line up, actually. Ooh, hold on a minute. We'll do that. We'll grab the blue stone. We'll go straight through like this. There we go. I don't know how well that's all going to line up, but that's okay. And what we can do is go and just update the zoning. We'll force zoning on these roads. We'll get zoning there. We'll get zoning there and there. And we have some zoning along there as well. So that's fine. It's not necessarily perfect zoning, but that's okay. We can go ahead and just put these uh, put these commercial buildings back in there. And that gives us some connections. That's a lot of connections to Spring Street. And I guess I should probably fix this corner while I'm here. Oh, there are so many people moving around this space already. That's actually kind of fantastic. Especially considering that there's no service points for this district yet, so that's something I'm going to have to deal with. But what I would like to do is just make this corner a little smoother, because I think that looks a little bit better. I did go around and neaten up all of these intersections, by the way. So every single one of these is a little bit smoother, a little bit better, and is hopefully going to work really nicely for us. But good lord, there's so many people coming through here. That's... That's actually fantastic. That's going to make this place look so, so good. So I guess what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and I'm going to just place every building that I want in this district because I think that's honestly going to be the easiest way to do this. So we'll go into here. We'll say road length is kind of important. We'll go for, I don't know, 30 units should be fine. And I want the courthouse. That's, that's building number one. I want the courthouse in here. It's very, very bright. It's honestly a little bit too bright, but it'll it'll do. What else do we want, though? We could do something like the Colossal Order offices if we wanted to get a little bit meta. I don't know that I necessarily want to. The Oppression office. What does it look like? I didn't even manage to place it because we just hit an autosave. The Oppression office. It's It's good. It's very, very good. But it's also, it's it's annoyingly, I guess, gritty and, and dark compared to this thing. We'll keep it there for now, though, and we'll take a look and see what else we have. Okay, so this is my weird selection of buildings. We have the courthouse. We have the oppression office. We have the government offices. We have Amsterdam Palace. And then this is where it gets weird. We have a television station. 
and we also have a media broadcast building. Now, the reason I'm putting the TV station and the media broadcast buildings in here, it's, it's very simple. I just think, oh, Manor Trails level four, lovely. Okay, we'll go back and look at that at some point. Uh, the reason I'm putting these in here is because, in a way, I feel like if we're going to have this big courthouse, if we're going to have all these government buildings, that maybe this is sort of the Westminster, Downing Street area of Nerdholm. So maybe having TV stations and sort of all that equipment nearby is going to be good because you're going to have news channels and reports and all that stuff coming out of this district all the time. So that's what I'm thinking for this. Now, what I want to do is I want to figure out positioning on all of these buildings. And I think the way I'm going to try and do this is simply, well, I don't know how well this is necessarily going to work, but I want to do something like this. And I want to just go at a 45 degree angle. I want zoning to be on. Maybe we go a little bit further back, maybe to here. And if we get 45 degrees right about there, we can hopefully go ahead and move the courthouse right into that spot. Now, it's not going to be central. It isn't central, but that's kind of exactly where I want the courthouse to be. It's right about here, sort of looking straight down this road, and I just think it looks cool. In fact, it needs to go slightly that way to be more or less lined up with the road. I just think, I mean, it's obviously blurry because depth of field is a thing, but I think that looks good. I think that's a cool place for it, and I think that's kind of where the courthouse should be. It's at this junction between the old and the new, and that's really cool to me. So that's that's kind of where I want the courthouse. I think that's a good spot for it. When it comes to everything else, that's a little bit more tricky. When it comes to the government offices, for example, I mean, in a way, I feel they could line this street, but at that point, we're putting old buildings opposite old buildings, and I don't know how great that's going to look. Although I will say, I'm very tempted to copy and paste these. I've done that before. I've, I've copied and pasted government buildings so that I can have a nice line of them. And maybe that is what we do. Might not be a terrible idea. It really might not be a terrible idea at all. Maybe line this road with a bunch of government buildings. Although that leaves the question of where do things like Amsterdam Palace and the Oppression Office go? Because I feel like they should have sort of a grand spot as well. And... I'm starting to think that maybe I can't get all of these in here. The courthouse is is a certainty. It has to be there. The rest of them, well, the media buildings too. Oppression and Amsterdam, though, not too sure. But for now, let's put this guy here. And, I mean, looking at it, it doesn't look too bad. The only issue I have is the, uh, is the grill out front. I might need to go and get the... I can't remember the name of the mod, but there is a mod that lets you go and disable certain props within certain buildings. I might need to go and pick that up because uh, that's that's maybe a little bit that's maybe a little bit silly. But let's try putting these guys or this guy right back there, and then I'll copy and do one, two, three of them. That uh, was four of them. Let me get rid of one of those. That's going to be extremely expensive, by the way. That's going to be ridiculously expensive. But I just want to get a rough idea of what this would look like if we lined a whole bunch of them like this. And honestly, it's it's a bit much. It is, it is, that is definitely, definitely way too much. Those buildings are clearly identical. So let's try something a little bit different. Let's try putting one of these guys, let's try Amsterdam Palace. And I'll put Amsterdam Palace right here, right at sort of the middle of these roads. And then the government offices could go right up against it on that side and right up against it on that side. And now that is a little bit more interesting because we're breaking up the identical buildings here with this slightly fancier building right in the middle. It has the same decals out front as well. So it actually, I actually like that. I do. I like that a lot. It's almost sort of lined up with the courthouse as well. So a nice little bit of uh, continuity maybe is the word I'm looking for. Maybe not. But uh, regardless, I think that's uh, I think that's pretty cool. So I think this is what we're going to do. And then what I'd also like to do 
is I'd like to look at just outlining these guys with a few paths. So a path going right back here and a path going right back here. We can go ahead and bring it over just like this as well. And so that gives us some paths going right around these guys. And maybe we do the same thing with the courthouse as well. Although I'm not really too sure how I would do that, to be quite honest. You know, I've been wanting to play around with right angled roads for a while. Ever since I discovered this was a thing that you could do in City Skylines, thanks to Node Controller. And I've got to say, there's something about them that just looks right back here. That might have been a unintentional. Was that a was that a pun? That was kind of a pun. It wasn't intentional, but I'll take it. It just looks right, though. It looks interesting. It's very fitting. It, seem, it seems very formal. It feels very formal. And that's what I feel like that should. Now, something else I've done is I've actually cut out this little space here. This was originally a part of Florence Heights. But what I'm thinking I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use this space for my media buildings so that they're not necessarily going to be within my pedestrian zone, but they are going to be nearby. And I think that's probably good enough, to be honest. I think that's going to look kind of interesting having this guy right here. And then this guy, for example, could go on this corner. Now, I don't love that they're sort of weirdly connected together like that, but I also don't strictly hate the fact that they're like that it's definitely a bit weird having them sort of connected like this i don't know if that's necessarily something i want to keep but again i i don't necessarily hate it let's see what happens if we you know just move this building sort of down to here a little bit so that those corners kind of line up and uh i mean looking in here it's definitely yeah, it's very messy isn't it it's not a great it's not a great look I guess I might want to decide which building I prefer. Do I prefer the generic sort of media broadcast building or do I, I prefer the sort of very clear TV station? And for this particular spot, I've got to be honest, I kind of prefer the media broadcast building. I think it just fits in that little bit better, you know? It looks like it sort of belongs in here, whereas the other one looked like it belonged sort of out in the, uh, I don't want to say out in the county, but sort of like it would belong out in the county to be uh, to be completely honest so let's go ahead and just grab some of these roads and let's see what happens if i raise them all up to the same height as the uh, as the street right here it doesn't that's not too bad that's a little bit steep right there that's definitely that's definitely a little bit steep and uh, there's definitely some stuff in here that's going to need a little bit of love by the looks of it but it's not strictly the end of the world i grab you and you and you, for example, we can get a nice little slope going right there. And uh, it does look like I have messed up some zoning around here, which is which is a bit of a problem. Oh, boy. Okay. Well, I'm going to have to fix that. So it turns out a little something something I can do with the media broadcast building is use it to make our small pedestrian area service points blend in to this space. This to me looks like sort of a cargo entrance to the media building. And so that's kind of perfect. I think that's exactly what we will consider that to be. We do have a way to sort of drive or walk down here if someone really wanted to. So maybe some visitors would drive down and park around back or something like that. And then this space right here, well, this I kind of want to turn into a plaza or a park or something like that. I have actually gone in and I've put some uh, some paths in here, some of the gravel paths, as you can see, and no one's using them right now, which is fine. Actually, no, they are being used right there. Perfect. Uh, so they are absolutely being used and uh, they can sort of go and walk around and do whatever they want to do. But I do want to put some decorations in there. I do want to make that look like sort of a pleasant little green space of some sort. But before I do that, I do want to focus on this space because this is, it's getting to be a little bit intimidating. I've got to be honest. I know that sounds silly, but I just, I want to do this space right. I want it to look interesting and I want it to be good. Now I'm going to be honest. I don't know that the oppression office is, is going to go in here. I just don't know that we need it. So... I think 
what we could do is get rid of the oppression office for now. We'll go ahead and clear out this road and I should also probably pay attention to just how much traffic is trying to get through here and also how much of that traffic happens to be recycling trucks, which is probably something I should be concerned about, but we'll leave that be for now. Let's take another look though and see if there's any other unique buildings that we could play with. We do have towers. We do have things like the transport tower, which honestly would probably look really cool in this corner. I'm not going to lie. I think it would actually look really interesting. So I'm suddenly slightly tempted to uh, to try and do something there. Because if I did say this, well, no, what, what angle would that have to be? It would have to be 21.5, I guess, ish or 70. Hold on. Let's let's try this. If I did that, could I put the transport tower on that corner? I'd need uh, I'd need to force zoning on that road, but then put it like there, basically. That's that's actually kind of cool. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. That's that's actually kind of cool and I kind of like it. I'm not sure how I'm going to make this work, but I think I've just found myself a little project where I suddenly want to put the transport tower in here because it does it does sort of fit, doesn't it? You know, it's it's next to an IT cluster. Yes, it stands out quite a bit in an otherwise very old school space, but uh, I think that looks really cool. <laughs> I've got to be honest. I think I think that looks really good. So let's figure out how we're going to redo this little section. And uh, I guess, oh man, it's going to give us some space to play with back here as well. Let's just rotate this slightly, a little bit more, a little bit back that way. I think that's about the angle we're looking for. We'll bring it that way ever so slightly. And yeah, I I like that a lot. So now I just have to work out what this angle is so we can get a nice road in here. And that should be relatively easy. I guess it's that is, is what we're looking for. That's That's pretty good. So this lines up. This goes to here, and I mean, it's weird. It, it is a bit weird. It is very, very different building for the area, but you can't deny it looks interesting. It definitely looks interesting. And there we go. We have Transport Tower sat nicely in this corner. It is very different to everything else that's going to be in this space, but... I think it looks kind of fantastic right here. It's a really nice cornerstone of the district. It's a nice cornerstone of the city. It is a large office building that also attracts tourists and also has some stalls out back so you can get some food. Obviously, the Sims aren't necessarily going to do that, but if they could, they would because they have a choice of a grill. They got some ice cream, they got some food trucks, they got a fountain. It's good. It's, I think it's a good little place. I think it's a nice little space. So, let's start looking towards the rest of Spring Streets, or whatever this is eventually going to be called, and let's figure out what we're going to do with everything else in here. Now, I will say, I do think it'd be interesting to sort of wrap this in some trees, kind of similar to what we've done with Nerd Home Institute, but I don't think I'm going to go as dense as that. I think what I'll probably do is just dot some trees in here or use the prop line tool to put some trees in here, but that's for a little bit later on. And so after a little bit of time, more time than I care to admit, we have firmly planted the courthouse in the middle of Spring Street. But I've come to realize something, and it's something that's really important, and it's something that sort of annoys me and by sort of annoys me I mean really really annoys me and it's such a me thing to do if you think back a little bit I don't know how long this video is so far but if you think back a little bit I mentioned that I wanted to build this place for a specific reason I wanted to build this place for the disaster response unit what's the one thing that I forgot to to place in here what's the one thing I forgot to put in here to size up the space. It is, of course, the disaster response unit, the building that we looked at so closely and said, oh, it's so similar to, <laughs> it's so similar to those other buildings. It now doesn't fit in here. Or it would, 
if I was to put it exactly where the courthouse is, <laughs> which is, uh, which isn't really an option. To be quite honest, I, I don't really feel like doing that. So I'm slightly frustrated with myself at the moment because I don't know where this thing can go. And I do want to move it into a slightly more central position. Now, what I'm curious about is if I could, for example, put it here. And the, <laughs> the answer is no, because it's too big. Uh, I could put it down here. I could put it on that uh, on that avenue and it would fit. But there's actually nowhere in here except for the courthouse. Oh, man. Okay, well, I guess I got a little bit carried away on this one. And, uh, man, <laughs> I'm really not sure what to do now. I, I guess, hmm, I guess we put some buildings in here. I guess that's a thing we do. I wasn't really planning on putting buildings in here, but I think, to be honest, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking I might, because if I do this, for example, I can get some nice, you know, old European buildings across there. I can get some sort of old European buildings across there. As for this guy, though, I mean, do I want old European buildings down beside the courthouse? In a way, I feel like I do. I've got to be honest. In, in a way, I feel like it would be kind of interesting to have some older style buildings alongside the courthouse. It would enclose it a little bit, but... Well, do I want to do old European buildings or do I want to do modern city center buildings? Because if I do the modern city center buildings... I mean, they're going to have that European style. They're just not European. So maybe that's what we should do. Let's let's experiment a little bit here and see what exactly we can do. And I'll tell you what I'm also going to do is I'm going to say prioritize the newer roads right here so that I can go ahead and have these buildings go the entire way back there. And then I need you to also prioritize the newer roads. There we go. So that'll sort of work out. I'm going to have to define this as a an actual district, but that's okay. And then this space here is going to be a little bit weird. This space is actually going to be really weird. I'm not too sure what's going to go in that triangle, but we'll figure that out as well. For now, let's just go ahead and say that all of this and all of this is going to be commercial zoning. All of this is going to be commercial zoning, and so is all of this. I'm going to leave these spaces empty for now, and I suppose the next step is just saying that this is, in fact, its own district. So that needs to go sort of all the way around here, all the way across there, and all the way down here. I realize I've also forgotten about the Media Broadcast Center, so we're going to need to uh, build around that as well. There's a lot of things I still need to do. And it's, I'm, I'm getting anxious. I'm going to be honest. I'm, I've got a sense of anxiety about all the stuff I still need to do for this, uh, for this little building and this whole revamp of this part of the city center. But I do feel like this is a lot more interesting than what we had before. I think Primrose District before was just way too generic. This is now, I mean, you zoom out, even though it's unfinished. I mean, it's, it's clearly something a bit more important. Uh, now what I do also need to do is I think go and define this as a part of the district as well. And that does move the district name off of the, I guess, pedestrian zone name. So hopefully that's going to keep things a little bit neater right there. We can just tidy this up a little bit as well. And we can, we can just make sure everything else is neat, which it absolutely is. So middle district is going to have a modern city center feel to it. I'm apparently still moving the disaster response unit. Interesting. A little bit of my, uh, a little bit of my HUD down there seems to have gotten stuck. Can I just go click on you and say move and, and just, just keep you there? There we go. All right. Well, that works out. We'll just keep that there for now. So yeah, middle district's going to have that particular uh, style to it. We'll go ahead and let the buildings build and we'll see what it looks like. It would be great. Oh, it would be great if we could get this to be an actual corner, which, thinking about it, I might be able to do. Maybe. There's there's definitely, definitely a chance. If I was to grab you and go straight down like that, that gives us a little corner section, 
which is exactly what I want. I want these buildings to fit in here really nicely. So if I do this as well, that doesn't give us the corner section that I'm looking for. But if I did that, it absolutely does. And so if I do that, it absolutely does there as well. So I think that's how we're going to do this. It's, it's not going to line up perfectly, but that is going to give us some corner buildings. And that's kind of what I'm looking for. So we'll go ahead and just zone all of this again. We'll zone all of this again. And then because this is asymm uh, asymmetrical, it's going to be slightly messed up. But that's okay. I just want to see these. Oh, this is going to be one of the beautiful corner buildings as well. It's absolutely perfect. So let's have a look at you. You got the glass up at the top. Oh, perfect. Absolutely perfect. Gives us a little bit of a uh, pedestrian sort of space under there as well. Oh, we got the same on the other side, too. Okay. So this actually worked out, but what does it look like when it comes down towards the courthouse? That's kind of the important part here. We also have more space to fill up, which hopefully we can do. Oh, now this is a tricky one. From the front, it's definitely interesting having the courthouse flanked by these different buildings. And then from the back, I actually love how these buildings look when they're looking out into the little green space that I made behind the courthouse. But in general, this just doesn't have the vibe that I'm looking for, and I'm not really sure why. I just, I, I can't put my finger on it, but something about this just doesn't look right to me. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to take out this zoning. And this is, to be honest, usually the type of thing I would cut out of a video. I'd usually be like, eh, I don't really want to leave in, you know, me screwing something up. But screwing things up is part of the process. And I think I'm going to I'm going to leave it in because this is a process. This is something we're trying to figure out and we're, we're trying to see what this place is going to look like. And screw ups happen, right? I didn't. I, I never set out with a clear idea of what I'm going to do in any one video or another. I I kind of just like to improv. I just like to figure it out as we go along. I mean, I'll sit down and, and look at the map and I'll think, okay, well, we did this last time, so let's not spend three episodes in a row building a, uh, a campus or something like that. But I don't really ever sit down with a, a sort of preconceived notion of, you know, what exactly I'm going to build. I'll have a, a list of ideas in my head and be like, oh, that would be cool one day or that would be cool one day and maybe one day we'll do this and one day we'll do that. But yeah, these kind of screw ups are, are just a, another part of the process of putting together a new uh, a new district. And I mean, it's it doesn't really matter. I mean, we have got demand for, uh, for commercial. We have got demand for residential. We have demand for offices. I could... If I really wanted to, just put those uh, commercial buildings in there anyway, and it would deal with some of that demand. But I, I just want this to look a certain way. I don't necessarily know what that certain way is yet, and that's it's actually kind of bothering me. Which is, to be honest, why I'm I'm rambling right now is because I'm trying to figure out, you know, as I do little bits of detail, as I put these trees in here. You know, what exactly is it that I'm, I'm looking for around the courthouse? Because if it's not buildings, then that does kind of limit it a little bit to parks and plazas and perhaps a promenade. But I just don't know. I do like these trees down here, though. I actually that's that's something that's something I really enjoy. I think that looks fantastic going down there. So that's that's good. That's that's a plan that I had for a little bit. So at least that one can happen. I just uh. Yeah, I just, I don't, I don't know what to surround this with. Do I want to just do a whole bunch of parks? I mean, that would be an option, but I was, I was kind of hoping for sort of a Westminster vibe, uh, sort of a, you know, the, the seat of government and law and, and all of that. So maybe we go and look at a map of London and, uh, and see what exactly Westminster looks like from above, because I've never actually bothered to check. I've, I've gone and looked at maps around Buckingham Palace, obviously, to get ideas for uh, for some of the roads that we've built, but 
I've never really gone and looked at uh, the area around Westminster, although I know it's on the it's on the water and I know it has the palace and I've been there. I've been there a couple of times, so you know, I I, I have an idea. I've seen it on the news a million times and and all of that, so I don't know. Maybe <laughs> maybe maybe we should just use old European style buildings, but I don't know. This whole area is surrounded by old European style buildings. I really I just want to do something different. That's I think that's what I want is is something different. I just don't know what the something different is. <laughs> it's <laughs> it's really bothering me. So we'll have to uh we'll figure it out. But for now, let's just get these uh let's just get these fences in here. Let's just get this area nicely surrounded in a uh, a nice nice line of trees. Make it all fancy like and then maybe Maybe once the trees go in, I can zoom out and look at this and be like, ah, that's what it needed. Not, not specifically the trees, but, you know, it'll, it'll hit me. Because that's, that's what happens as well, right? You go through these, you, you know, you'll, you'll work on a project and you'll get to a point, you kind of get like a creative block or something like that. And that's the other reason I, I'm, I'm rambling and also leaving this part of the video in is as, as silly as it sounds, I do regularly get like a creative block with city skylines and that is it's a really it's it's something that makes me really nervous because obviously city skylines is a very big part of this channel and therefore it's a very big part of my job and so having a creative block with city skylines is it is a very nervous it, it's a nerve-wracking thing because you know, I'll be sitting there and I'll be like, man, I need to get a video done, but I don't want it to be a bad video and I, I can't think of what to build and I don't know what to do today. And so I'll sit there and I'll go over it and over it and over it. And I'll be sitting there thinking, man, maybe I'm, <laughs> maybe I'm washed. Maybe I'm washed up. Maybe this is it. Maybe I've got no ideas left. And, uh, yeah, sometimes just sitting and, and working through the process and figuring out, well, if I can't do this, what can I do? You know, what, what ideas have I been sitting on for a little while and, I, uh, I think, I think that's important to remind yourself sometimes is that, you know, creative blocks happen and we screw things up and, and whatever, even if it is just in city skylines, right? Even if it doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things. And I think that's, it's, it's a lesson I feel like I can, I can bring up because, I mean, I, I know this series, for, uh, for example, has brought a lot of new people to the channel, so, uh, you might not be aware of this, but it was a creative block that led to my channel first growing back in 2016 i uh well it was it was two things it was number one a save file corrupted on my city skylines uh after dark series and so i was sitting there at three in the morning and i was freaking out because the series was doing quite well and i'm like man this is gonna be the end of the channel and everyone's gonna be really annoyed and this is gonna happen and that's gonna happen and the channel's never gonna grow and so I sat there at three in the morning and I'm like, what can I do? And I remembered this idea that I had for a wedding cake shaped city, a tiered city. And I sat there and I thought, man, I don't know if anyone's going to watch this. Like I've, I've done Sims 4 Let's Builds before, but I don't know if like Let's Build and City Skylines are really a thing. And I did some looking around YouTube at the time and they kind of weren't, which is weird to think about. Like, Let's Builds and City Skylines weren't really much of a thing at the time. So I'm like, man, I could do this, but I don't think anyone's going to watch it. And here we are, something like 4 million views later. So that's uh, just on that video. That video has like 4 million views. It's the most viewed video on the channel uh, by quite a bit. So safe to say that sometimes having those little creative panics can be, uh, they can be, <laughs> they, they can be pretty good for you. They can, uh, they can, they can lead to, uh, some real interesting, uh, interesting things. And I mean, isn't that usually the, isn't there like a saying that challenge or something is the, the, the driver of the, I don't know, the motivator of creativity. I don't know. It, it, <laughs> I don't know where I'm going with this. It's a city skylines video, man. I don't need to, <laughs> I don't need to get this preachy. I've just, all I did was delete some commercial buildings and I'm sitting over here thinking I'm, <laughs> thinking I'm some kind of preacher. <laughs> That's, <laughs> this is what happens when I don't travel anywhere for years. I was thinking about this recently. I was talking with some people and they were like, man, 
you know, City Skyline, like, gaming videos, it's not so much about the game, it's about the stories and it's about the narration. And I'm like, yeah, that was great for me when I was traveling before the pandemic. But I haven't really been anywhere since, so... I don't have all the same stories to talk about, I just have all the old stories. And that's why if you go through and watch a bunch of my City Skyline stuff, a lot of the same stories come up. Because, uh... I haven't really traveled all that much in the last few years. Maybe, maybe that'll change next year, but I also don't love traveling anymore, so I don't know. Anyway, we have trees around this space. I think that looks pretty good. Let's figure out what's going into this space because it's still just empty. <laughs> And so, after a considerably lengthy amount of time and a few abandoned ideas, it's done. This new district is done, and I adore how it's turned out. It's also been renamed. It's now called Nerdminster, because of course it's called Nerdminster. I, I can't state enough how much I love this and how happy I am that I threw out that idea of putting the modern city center buildings in here. And I'm also glad to say that we brought back the oppression office. There was a chance there it wasn't going to be in this space, but it is, and it's here four times. Now, of course, that means that we are now losing money with Nerdholm, which is a bit of a problem. So we're gonna have to focus on bringing the population back up a little bit, which, I mean, we had a death wave here and there, so that's certainly not helped us. And I think we still have a bit of a death wave going on. Yeah, we absolutely do still have a death wave going on. But to be fair, we are only losing $1,800, so it's not gonna be too difficult to bring that back. But let's worry about that another time. Let's talk a little bit about what I've done in here. So, long story short, I did want to get a bit of a Downing Street Westminster vibe into this space, so I did go and look on Google Maps at what Downing Street looks like from uh, above, and it's sort of a lot of this. It's these types of buildings right here. We don't really have these spires and domes on Downing Street, but it's, it's sort of this. So I thought this would be a good little fit, and then I decided to just sort of stick them together on a corner, and actually the oppression office turned out pretty good in here. Behind them, I decided to build some sort of custom, I guess, parks. They're all walled off, so you could imagine these are only accessible from the buildings or for staff or whatever, but no one goes here because they don't really lead anywhere interesting. But from above, it's an interesting little bit of color, and I thought that was kind of important for this space. Uh, much the same on this side as well. A few more trees, a bit more of a garden and a statue instead of uh, a fountain. But then what's most interesting and what I'm most proud of is this little space right here. I really wanted to get some European buildings in here, but I didn't just want it to be generic zoning. So what I did was I went and placed a bunch of residential zoning in here, as you can see. And the way I did this was by placing a two by two square and then waiting for this building to grow. And then I set it as historical because a historical building can still level up, but the visual appearance will be preserved. And what I noticed was that essentially all of the buildings at this size for the European style look like this. But if they were commercial, they would have signs. And if they were offices, there was a chance they would have signs, whereas the residential ones don't. So we can imagine that maybe there's, I don't know, apartments and stuff in these buildings that we have government workers living in or renting. And I went so far as to give them little gardens back here as well. There's nothing in them, but I think it's kind of nice. And it's certainly nicer than these guys who don't get gardens, but they do get a plaza. So I like how this has turned out. I think it's a really, really cool space. The only issue, of course, is that the uh, disaster response unit is still over there. Before we wrap things up for today, we do need to talk about this road. Although I, I, I just want to look at this. I just I just want to look at this really quick because I'm so pleased with how this turned out. Just, just for one second, I just want to look at this and be like, yeah, I built that. It's nothing super special, but I built it and it's mine. And if anything, interestingly, it's made traffic worse 
We started this episode talking about traffic, and it's gotten worse. So that's nice. Now, like I said, there were a lot of suggestions in the comments of the last episode for names for our main boulevard. And a lot of them made reference to Queen Elizabeth II, the UK's previous recently passed away monarch. And I thought that was really interesting and quite sweet. But then I saw a comment by Nathalot, who said, I think the Emerald Entrance could be a cool name for the Buckingham Palace Road. And it's a small hint to the kind of similar Emerald County series. And then DCPNGN said Emerald Promenade or Emerald Boulevard has a nice ring. And then I realized something. I went and I turned on street names and it turns out that the default name for this road is Reed Boulevard. So I think Emerald Boulevard is perfect. And I need to capitalize D on that. Emerald Boulevard as the main road that brings you from the highway the entire way to City Hall. Emerald Boulevard. Fantastic name. Absolutely wonderful suggestions from absolutely everybody. And just to point out, it does continue the entire way up to here. And then we go into all these different little streets. We get Shirley Street, Lafayette Street. We've got Shirley Street there again. We've got uh, Graham Street, Crescent Street. And that makes me really curious about all the other street names we have. What uh, What's the name of the road that this is on? Glade Street. Oh boy, I could look at... Uh, I could look at street names for a while. I've, I've not had these things turned on in such a long time. It's weird seeing them, but it's also really cool. Anyway, I just wanted to get that out of the way. I wanted, you know, figured we'd get it done before we wrap the episode up. Uh, Emerald Boulevard, fantastic name. Thank you for suggesting it, everybody. It's it's a good one. It's a very good one. It was also Emerald Entrance was the most uh, thumbs up comment with a suggestion on the last episode. So that worked out really, really nicely. Democracy. Right, that's, that's just democracy, I guess. Anyway, that is going to do us for today. This episode, like I said a few times, has been the longest to record so far. Uh, <laughs> I'm hoping that doesn't mean that this is going to be like a two hour long video when it's edited down, but we'll certainly see. If it is, I apologize. I'll try to bring the episode numbers and times back down a little bit, but... Uh, what can I say? It's been fun. It's been interesting dealing with the little, you know, challenges and doing all the problem solving and trying to figure things out. So thank you very much for watching, everybody. It's been an absolute pleasure as always. And as always, I'll see you next time. Bye bye. <laughs>